Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Hey everyone, it's James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors, and it's week three of our broadcast season. And today, you get to watch PJ, Vic, and I ride the struggle bus. The last two weeks, everything's gone our way. A great crappie bite to start the season. We transitioned right into week two, where we got into a great walleye and muskie bite on the Chippewa Floyds with Ty Sennett. And that brings us to week three. We had a great plan. We're gonna head to North Dakota. We're gonna get north of Devil's Lake and get out on some bodies of water that we're really familiar with. Target some early ice, walleyes, and perch. Uh, either we've completely forgotten how to fish these lakes, or that bite wasn't happening. But that's okay, because we had a plan B. We were gonna go up Turtle Mountain, further north in North Dakota, and see if we could get in on a really good trout bite. They actually have some really good stock trout lakes in that area, and we're gonna see if we could uh, put together kind of a, a, a new, an original show from that part of the world. We caught four trout, that's not gonna cut it. So what to do? Uh, we turned the bus around, we headed back to Minnesota, and of course, that brings us close to Connor Kleist out in western Minnesota, where uh, we were gonna trek in on a sundown bite, and I fell through the lake and filled my boots. So from there, uh, we kind of rallied and decided that when all else fails, what do you do? You go to Upper Red Lake. So that's what today's show is all about. It's me and PJ Vic. We're gonna go check out Upper Red Lake. Uh, ice conditions are a little sketchy yet. We're gonna run out of JR's Corners, hear that there's a lot of fish right offshore. So uh, we do eventually get in on a good bite. It was not easy, so never let it be said that In-Depth Outdoors gives up without giving it our all. So stick around, I think you're gonna enjoy today's show. Pretty easy to tell where you need to stop. Yeah, I <laughs> don't want to go much further that way. No. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. we'll just stay on, obviously, a hundred yards back or so from that open water. Yeah. And let's just try to fish outside as long as we can. That sounds good. We if, got... if the rain picks up, we got to get inside the hub. Well, but... We're rain switching the snow right now, so hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Followed it up and down. Oh, there we go. Very nice eater. Perfect. And that is the plan today. Uh -huh. it, it's fish fry time. Yep, we have some very bad intentions towards our limit of walleye. <laughs> yes, we do. I, I had switched over to this eighth ounce green UV rattle spoon. Um, the fish are being a little bit cranky this morning, so we went to a little bit more subtle tactics. Um, started off with rip and wraps and uh, slab wraps and uh, I'm definitely getting more follows with the minnow head and the eight ounce rattle spoon. So we're gonna keep that program going. Oh, I fish bro. It's you, bro, it's you. There, there you go. go. Ooh. James just set this I fish pro up. Oh, I don't know where the drag is on that one. <laughs> You're good. Ooh. 
just said. That is a spunky fish. Well, it's because it's a nice one. That is a nice one. Hello. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> What'd that take, like 30 seconds? How, how long does it take me to walk from <laughs> here to that hole? <laughs> That's a good sign. Yes, it is. Well, not a good sign for him. Right, right. Might have taken that one a little deep. He did. He's coming home with us. He, he was dinner anyways, so. All right. All right. That's Sweet. cool. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of these fish that are just slowly coming up and looking, and both of us were thinking the same way. They are grouchy. Yes. But catchable. Yes. And I made a huge mistake. When I ran over here, I forgot the middle bucket over there. Oh, that's, yeah. You can always spot the guys that have their, uh, <laughs> their set line game down. Yeah. The guy that's coming to assist always brings right, the middle bucket. Right, right. We'll, we'll work, work our way I'll into it. it. Yeah, yeah. Strike Master introduces the new Lithium 40 Volt. Everything you've ever wanted in an ice auger. With a 40% increase in cutting speed over the competition and up to 100 holes per charge, the Lithium 40 Volt has the power and stamina you need and the two amp rapid charger that can bring a fully discharged 40 volt battery pack to a full charge in as little as two and a half hours. The new Lithium 40 Volt, only from Strike Master. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. We say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. The new iFish Pro 2.0 now offers an insulated base to help keep your ice hole from icing over and an upgraded rod holder for use with longer, heavier rods. Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro. Tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip-up fishing. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. James, I fish pro. That's the alternative method there. <laughs> I figured as long as it was bent over, I might as well just start reeling. <laughs> it's a walleye. There we go. Man, I tell you what, these I fish pros are saving our bacon today. The bite up here to Upper Red's been pretty darn good based on fishing reports, but we've got a front coming in. I mean, obviously. And the fish seem to be in a little bit of a funk. We are catching a few fish digging the spoons, but the iFish Pros and the good old fashioned fat head just hung a foot above the bottom is putting most of our fish on the ice. That one's a uh, Thanksgiving dinner guest. So what we're using here, iFish Pro, and then we're fishing a tuned up custom rod dead stick. And this one's uh, about 34 inches long. And what I like about this is it's got a real soft tip and it transitions into some real nice backbone. You can catch a pretty big fish with one of these dead sticks. You got the tip is real soft, so when they grab that minnow, they start to run. They don't get a real sharp resistance when the uh, line comes tight on the rod tip. And then down on this end, we're fishing an Akuma. And this is a size 500 bait feeder. And what's really cool about this is I've got the drag set right now. And when I engage this feature back here, it basically adds a secondary drag I'm providing tension just at the spool here, and it's very, very light. That fish grabs the bait, flag goes up, it starts to move off, and that uh, bait feeder function kicks in. And what I did when I ran up is was just close that bait feeder level and just started to reel. And then on this end, just a real simple rig. Split shot, about a one foot leader. I've got an eighth ounce sliding sinker on the line there, and that red loop, of course, is the trigger that uh, sets off the flag on the iFish Pro. 
And for once, I got the middle bucket handy. Yes, you do. Ooh, that one was on there. <laughs> All right. Feels like a nice, nice fish. Oh yeah, very nice. There we go. There we go. All right. Nicely done, That's sir. That's a nice fish. What, 20 incher? Yeah, I was in there tying up another iFish Pro. Yeah. I fish pro, you're good to go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Need a uh, hemos? Nope, right. All right, right where it's supposed to work. Be. Nice fish. Awesome. Very nice. Dinner. Guest of, <laughs> guest of honor at Thanksgiving. Yes. I'm telling you what, if you had to choose between jigging and uh, getting them on uh, set lines, yeah. it'd be jigging. It would be. You know what's worse than catching them on set lines? Not catching them Not at catching all. them at all. <laughs> and that's kind of where we're at right now. The bite is tough. Yeah. So if we have to put a minnow, this far in front of their face and give them time to think about it, that's what we'll do. Yeah, we definitely have switching conditions out here. We started with the southwest wind. Mm -hmm. It's wrapping all the way around and gonna come from the northwest and picking up. And you know what fishermen think about that usually. We talked about that last night. That yeah. We'd have a, a more aggressive bite until that wind switched to the north, which yeah. it has. And predictably, things went. Yeah. So yep. I think what we're gonna do, I mean, I'm going to pull my jig line and yep. I'm actually just going to fish two dead sticks as long as we keep one jig line down there, right? Yep. One guy working a spoon yep. just to kind of keep the temperature, you know, okay. take the temperature, see what their mood is right you know, at that moment. I think that's the best play. Sounds good. I'll be that guy. Because that's a nice fish. That's a very nice fish. Very healthy. I was looking through the window of the Eskimo and I, I saw you <laughs> running by and then it was a yeah. heck of a heck of a bend yeah. on that dead stick. Yeah, I pulled your trick and just reeled down on him because he was going. So. Right. Yeah. In-depth outdoors, spot on the spot ID. On today's spot on the spot ID, I'm gonna use the Fish Smart app that allows me to put Lake Master maps on my phone to show you what we did to approach this early ice walleye bite on Upper Red Lake, and then also talk a little bit about ice safety. Um, ice safety first. Um, we went out of JR's corner, right about there, and uh, great access to the lake. And thankfully, there's a lot of walleyes right offshore from their access point. But what's out a little further, running from the southwest to the northeast, is a very significant and active crack. Until you get the green light from these uh, resorts located on the uh, south shore of the lake, absolutely do not cross that crack. If you get an offshore wind, um, you're gonna come back to that crack on your way home and see 50, 60 foot of open water. And that's gonna put you in a tough spot. So uh, the good news is uh, there's tons of fish on this side of the crack and the ice in that area is eight to 10 inches thick. So uh, really, I don't see any reason to be pushing things right now. So let's talk about what we did. We came out of JR's corner. We went out to about uh, eight, nine foot and hooked a left. We got over into this area here where you can see there are some uh, rocks uh, coming out towards deeper water. Uh, obviously we fished in some very cloudy overcast conditions so the fish stayed shallow all day long. And what we found was a little high spot where we had deeper water. So this is eight foot of water. Here in green, we had deeper water kind of all the way surrounding it. And what we did is we sat right on top with some of the iFish pros and then jigged around it. It really was one of those keys to our success. Uh, the fish were very uh, negative, neutral, just weren't chasing baits. And so what we found was if we punched a bunch of holes and fished through them quickly, it felt like there were no fish there. If we picked a good spot and just sat, that gave those just really lethargic fish time to come around and decide to eat those baits. So uh, today it was all about slow down, hunker down, and let the fish come to us. So if you get out or you're looking to get out on Upper Red Lake right now, there is a great year class or two of fish in tight to shore. You can get out there by walking, four wheelers or snowmobiles, just stay on this side of the crack. You're in for a great time on what has got to be one of the most consistent, reliable bodies of water in the Upper Midwest. Shuttle only from Markham Technologies.
Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. Glacial Lake Stock is your number one source for Yeti ice houses. With our large inventory of new and used Yetis, our experienced staff will help you select the perfect model for the way you fish. From sale to service, Glacial Lake Stock has you covered. As an authorized Yeti service center, we can handle all your service or warranty needs and work to keep you fishing all winter long. Stop in today or check us out online at glaciallakestock.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. For this winter's next cold front, the new Strike Master Surface Suit offers features ice anglers demand. The Surface Suit is 100% waterproof, windproof, has an adjustable hem, and is constructed using a 100% nylon Oxford shell that offers unmatched durability. The Surface Suit combines incredible warmth with the confidence that comes from knowing Strike Master's stay on surface flotation will be there, providing up to two hours of flotation when the jacket and bibs are worn as a pair. Strike Master, the hottest brand on the ice. Gotcha. Oh, I gotcha. This is the big fish hole. Yeah, it was a big hey, fish hole. It's on upper red. It's all relative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice walleye. Yeah, it is. Very nice. All right. Oh, oh right just in snood there. hooked. That was close. Another one for the pile. Yes. Oh, flag. I'm gonna get him this time. No. <laughs> got him. Fish on. I got him, PJ. This is the smart one that's been perplexing us, no. I don't know why he's so smart. He's not very <laughs> big. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that fish is responsible for uh, three flag trips and two lost minnows. I'm guessing so. So I've got the three fish that I'm going to take home. Yep. I think we're going to start letting fish go. That sounds you good. You all right with that? Yeah, I'm fine all with right. that. Boop. See you later, fish. Boom. So um, one thing to point out, so we're, we're on the front side of Thanksgiving here, so we're still in November. Uh, December 1, the regulations here change. Now, the limit's always four, uh, but before December 1, you can keep four fish, only one over 20 inches. So there are some bonus points given to those that come up before December 1. Get We're, to keep a few bigger fish. We get to take advantage of that today. Yeah. Yep. Oh, another one. Heck yeah. There, we got him. All right, things are picking up here. Just come back from the one that James caught and we got another one going here. Here it comes, here it comes. All right. Another nice 16 incher I'd say. Boy, he wasn't going anywhere. All right, just like James said, I've got my four, he's got three. That's about all we're gonna keep for today. So we'll get this one back in the water. There he is. This guy come up hard on me three different times. Come on, you. Ooh, good head shakes at the hole. There we go. All right. That one's on a spoon. That green UV one eighth ounce tingler spoon. That's a nice fish. You know, we've had some pretty tough conditions today. I mean, the weather has definitely not been our friend. We've been able to uh, put together a pretty nice catch a fish here today. Mostly set lines on the iFish Pros, but we're mixing in a few on these spoons. And as we come into that prime time this afternoon, I think we're gonna see a lot more fish like this on the hardware. Right. See you, fish. It's starting to come together, PJ. Yes, it is. PJ and I made a decision early on today 
that uh, we were kind of uh, break from our usual approach. Uh, particularly out here on Upper Red where the fish are so aggressive, very often the more holes you punch, the faster you move along, the more fish you catch. But we noticed uh, right away that these fish were really lethargic and we just weren't moving a lot of fish. And by that I mean we'd punch 20 holes and you could fish through all 20 of them and never actually see a mark. So once we found this little shallow uh, eight foot dome surrounded by deeper water and started to mark just a few lethargic fish, we made the decision like right away, let's just stay right here. Uh, we knew there were fish in the area and we knew that uh, if we waited here long enough, that because there were some fish roaming around the shallow spot, we'd increase our chances of encountering feeding fish. Now, had we run on down the uh, crack and fished up to the northeast and punched 100 holes, would we have found fish? Maybe, but this to us felt like a very safe bet. And I mention it because it's a complete departure from how we normally go about things. Uh, today, definitely sitting still has made the difference and just waiting for these fish to slowly turn on throughout the day. There we go. Oh, that fish didn't waste any time. We're getting into that uh, afternoon bite window here and these fish are getting fired up. I mean, nice walleye. That fish just came up and cracked it instantly. We've been having a lot of, you know, up and down, up and down, having to work a fish for a while. But that one did it exactly like it read the script. All right, get that one back. All right. All right. Well, according to that fish, they're starting to get more aggressive. I'm looking forward to a good afternoon bite here. I like when they come firing up and just hammer it. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandel value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandelGM.com. Introducing the Light Flight Laser Drill Unit by StrikeMaster. The Light Flight, the laser drill unit that offers a nearly 40% reduction in weight without sacrificing cutting speed. Paired with any quality brushless electric drill or any StrikeMaster powerhead, the Light Flight features a full-length flight and molded blade carriage that ensures your laser blades will always stay at the perfect cutting angle. Less weight, less fatigue, more holes in less time. The Light Flight Laser Drill Unit by StrikeMaster, the hottest brand on the ice. Stop ice formation in its tracks, down to 20 degrees below zero with the new Ice Defense Pro Series from Cold Nation Outdoors. Lightweight and highly portable, Ice Defense is compatible with all flasher and camera brands. Ice Defense draws in warmer water from below to circulate at the top of your hole, creating a powerful thermal flow to melt away ice, slush, and snow. Spend time fighting the fish, not an icy hole. Ice Defense, own the cold. You got a flag, James? Flag. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he's still there. We are running from one flag to the next right now. Take the bait runner off. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh, dead stick bent way over. It's gonna be a good one, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, for Red Lake, this is a dandy. Ha 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 ha! Ho ho! <laughs> That's a good one for the Upper Red Lake. Heck yeah! Got that VMC sure set trouble right in the corner of the mouth where it needs to be. That's a nice fish. I'd let that one go even if it was the first fish of the day. A little big for my taste. I think that's my biggest ever Red Lake walleye. Just a perfect fish. Not a scale out of place. See you bye. If that one can make it till uh, December 1st, she's uh, good to go for another year. I'm telling you what, this is turning out pretty good. We've kind of fished through what I think is the worst part of the day. I mean, it was pretty wet, sloppy. 
for about six hours today. Made it uh, a lot less fun than it could have been. But now that we're here towards the end of the day and the, the rain stopped, it's a lot more fun to fish. Of course, you throw in a bunch of nice fish to boot. It's gonna be one of those fun days. I actually find this uh, probably about as uh, enjoyable as those days where everything just goes right. A uh, day like today where you're almost gonna throw in the towel, nothing feels like it's gonna go right, that you stick with it, and things end up kind of just turning out. Very satisfying to me. Oh, there we go. That's a nice fish. Urgh. Yeah, maybe give me a hand with that one. Oh, what you got? Oh yeah, that's, Ooh, that's a dandy nice fish. fish. Very nice. Well, Red Lake's not supposed to have fish this nice. <laughs> Just saying. There you go, bud. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, nice. That was another one. I mean, probably about 20 inch fish again, but it just appeared out of nowhere. And I wasn't, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. I looked down, seen a big mark, and boom. I'm really liking their attitude this afternoon. Yeah, it's, tell it's you definitely what. improved. Yeah, way better. Off you go. Cool. Oh, there's another one. Oh yeah, there he is. It's not that big. Oh, just wild? He's just full of it. <laughs> Come on, fish. That seems to be their attitude this afternoon. I, full he's, of it. he's not, I mean, he's a nice fish, but he's fighting like he's 25 inches long. <laughs> this has been an awesome day. It really has. I it mean, was looking pretty bleak there for a while. Yeah. It, it, there's something to be said when you when you work for it at the end of the day it really tastes good when it works out there he is it's a nice oh, fish nice. heck yeah man these are some dandy <laughs> fish yeah, they really are <laughs> i've come up here you know in years past yeah 15 to 17 inch fish yeah. that's not what these are no boop all right that I'd say probably about that 19 inch 19, class. Yeah. Just a super nice clean fish. See you later, fish. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, it is. What do you say? A um, couple more fish and call yeah. it a day? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've, I've kind of hit the rev limiter as far as, you know, the fun limiter. <laughs> I'm in good shape. Yeah. Yep, it's feeling good. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. Uh, fished for six hours in a driving rain and eventually brought things around till we got a really nice bunch of fish on the ice. Huge thanks to PJ Vic for never giving up. I love fishing with that guy because he's got a great attitude and he's a really good fisherman to boot. So uh, as always, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.